Welcome to another Drug Chug episode, and today we'll be talking about statins and how they work, plus some pharmacology, so let's get right into it. So this is how we're going to break down this video. So first, we're going to talk about what is the point of statins, then we'll talk about how they actually work in our body, then we'll talk about why it's important to lower our LDL, then we'll get into the common stat drugs and some combination products. Then we'll talk about who actually uses a statin. Then we'll get into the adverse side effects and a quick summary. And then at the end, if you guys stick around, we'll have a short quiz to see what we retained. All right, so what is the point of statins? Well, the first thing you have to know is they're used to lower bad cholesterol. If it's one thing you're going to learn from this video, let it be this. They lower LDL, which is also known as bad cholesterol. And to find out how much bad cholesterol our patient has, we order something called a lipid panel. And the lipid panel tells us four things. So the first thing we see on the lipid panel is total cholesterol. And this isn't typically something we look at first. This is like a general overview of how much cholesterol is in our patient. And usually we want it less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. The next thing is the triglyceride level in our patient. And here we want it less than 150 milligrams per deciliter. I do want to mention that triglycerides primarily come from the foods we eat. So about 70% actually comes from our diet. And again, this isn't typically the first thing we look at when we're looking at a lipid panel, unless the triglyceride level is over 500, which is extremely high, then we focus on triglycerides. But if it's not over 500, it's not the first thing we're going to target. The third thing on the lipid panel is our HDL cholesterol. And our HDL cholesterol, or our high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, is our good cholesterol. And we want more and more of our HDL in our body. And in men, we typically want more than 40 milligrams per deciliter. And for women, we want a little higher. We want over 50 milligrams per deciliter. Even though it's nice to have more HDL in our patient's body, again, this isn't something typically we focus on. And last but not least, we have our LDL cholesterol, also known as our bad cholesterol. And yes, this is what we focus on when we take a lipid panel. And here we see we want less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. And one thing to note is majority of this cholesterol is made or synthesized in our liver. So the point of statins is to lower our bad cholesterol. And our bad cholesterol is also known as LDL. And our LDL is made or synthesized in the liver, which makes sense because that's where statins target. And we're going to go into more detail on why it's important to lower LDL cholesterol. All right, so let's actually see how these statins work in our body. And we already said that these statins work in our liver because our cholesterol is actually made in our liver. And the way the cholesterol is made in our liver is it starts with this long molecule called HMG-CoA, and this is just an abbreviation because it's a ridiculously long name, and this HMG-CoA basically gets cleaved off and it turns into something called mevalonate. And the enzyme that does this is called HMG-CoA reductase because it reduces the HMG into this more simplified building block. Now, this step here is the bottleneck to make cholesterol. So, this is the rate limiting step. So it's a really good target for drugs to hit so that we reduce the amount of cholesterol we make. And this is exactly how statins work. They actually inhibit this enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase and it stops the production of the mevalonate, which stops the synthesis of cholesterol in our liver. And the less cholesterol we have, the less LDL we have. So long story short, all statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors because they block the conversion of HMG-CoA into cholesterol in the liver. So we keep talking about LDL and how it's so bad for us. So let's actually see why it's bad for us. So here we have some of our blood vessels and all our blood vessels lead to our heart and our brain. 
And one thing that LDL does is that it actually starts becoming very sticky in our blood vessels and it starts to stick onto the blood vessel walls and over time they could build up narrowing the blood flow to the heart and to the brain and the problem is not only is it lowering the amount of blood reaching the heart and brain but our body naturally tries to fix this issue by allowing macrophages or cells that eat debris to come and clean this up. And that's where the problem is. When a macrophage comes and they clean up this yellow buildup, they break off pieces and that piece can reach the heart or reach the brain causing a heart attack or a stroke. Now on the other side, we have HDL and we talked that HDL is our good cholesterol and we want more of it in our body. So what HDL does is kind of the opposite. It actually finds LDL and it cleans and sweeps our blood vessels to the point where it's not detrimental to our body. So HDL efficiently cleans our blood vessels to prevent heart attack or stroke. Now it makes sense why we want less LDL in our body and more HDL. All right, so let's go over some common statin drugs that we might see our patients taking. And the best way to break these down is there's a bedtime statin, which means they have to take it before they sleep at bedtime, and the anytime statin, meaning they could take it at any time of the day. And one thing to note is we already know that the cholesterol is synthesized in our liver. Well, one thing to add to that, it's typically synthesized in the liver at night while we sleep. So the first statin we're going to talk about is a product called Lovastatin or Mevacor. And this is actually the first statin to reach market. This was the innovator drug. We also have another product called Simvastatin or brand name Zocor. And these two statins are actually pro-drugs, meaning they're not active until they're actually reaching our liver to be changed into an active drug. And then we have a product called Pravastatin or brand name Pravacol. It was nice of the manufacturer to make the name similar, easier for us to remember. And these three are going to be our bedtime statins. Again, the reason for that is because our cholesterol synthesis happens during the nighttime and also, these three have a shorter half-life, meaning they won't last in the body as long as our anytime statins. All right, and on this side, we have our anytime statins, and these we could take at any time of the day, not just at night. And here we have a product called Atorvastatin, or brand name Lipitor. Now, one thing to note, Atorvastatin is actually our most lipophilic statin, meaning it's going to travel through our muscles and tissues faster. That's why it's brand name Lipitor. And that can also cause some side effects, which we'll talk about later. And then we have a product called Rosuvastatin, or brand name Crestor. And this is actually our most lipophobic, meaning it's not going to want to penetrate our tissues as much. And one thing to note is that rosuvastatin is going to be our most potent statin medication that we have on market. And one interesting thing is that 5 milligrams of rosuvastatin equals 10 milligrams of atorvastatin, which equals 20 milligrams of simvastatin, which equals 40 milligrams of lovastatin and pravastatin. And the last quick thing you need to know is that there are high intensity statins for certain patients. So high intensity statins just means that they work the most aggressively at reducing LDL cholesterol. And this is really easy. We have our atorvastatin or our rosuvastatin. And our atorvastatin, anytime it's dosed from 40 to 80 milligrams, it's considered high intensity. And our rosuvastatin, it is already our most potent but when it's dosed from 20 to 40 milligrams, it's also considered a high intensity statin. I do want to quickly mention a combination product called Vitorin. And this is actually the only combination product you're going to need to know. And it has Simvastatin, which we know is our statin medication, that's combined with something called azetamibe. And together, they're called Vitorin. 
And the way it works is there's 10 to 80 milligrams of simvastatin in a pill. And we already know that simvastatin targets our HMG-CoA reductase, inhibiting it to lower the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver. And the Zetamibe only comes in 10 milligram dosages, but in this combination product, they're obviously together. And what happens is it actually works in your GI tract. And even though, like we said, most of our cholesterol is synthesized in the liver, well, there is some that we do take in from our diet. It's not a lot, but there is some that we could also consume. So what happens is the azetamibe actually targets these NPC1L1 receptors in our stomach, blocking it from letting cholesterol being absorbed in our bloodstream. And the net result of this combination is to lower cholesterol synthesis in the liver and to lower cholesterol absorption from our food in our stomach. And there's a bunch of other dyslipidemia drugs besides statins, and we're going to have a separate video talking about the other types of medication that lowers our cholesterol. So we learned what the point of statins are, we learned how they actually work in our body, and we also learned the common statin medication. So now let's see who actually uses a statin. And who uses a statin is essentially a person who has or is trying to prevent ASCVD, or also known as arthrosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So we need to define what ASCVD actually is. And here's a short list of some things that are considered as ASCVD. But the main ones is going to be stroke and heart attack. A patient can be assigned a statin for primary prevention, meaning they don't have ASCVD, but they are in the high risk profile of obtaining ASCVD, or they could be secondary prevention, meaning they've had ASCVD in the past, and we want to prevent a second occurrence from happening. Now, the easiest way to break this down is in four sections. The first one, very straightforward. If a patient has had a heart attack, a stroke, or any other ASCVD complications, they immediately get a statin. Specifically, they get a high-intensity statin. Our second category of patients are our diabetic patients that have an LDL level of 70 to 189. Once we have a diabetic patient, we need to do something called a ASCVD risk score. Essentially, you just plug in their height, their age, their weight if they smoke into this calculator that's provided by the AHA, and it gives us a percentage of how likely they're going to have an ASCVD event in the next 10 years. So if they're diabetic and they have an LDL level of between 70 to 189, and we calculate their score, if their score is less than 7.5%, they get a moderate intensity statin. If their score is more than 7.5%, they get a high-intensity statin. Our third patient population are our non-diabetics. And here, if their LDL is between 70 to 189 again, we calculate their 10-year ASCVD score again. And if they are more than 7.5%, we prescribe them a moderate to high statin, and this is based on clinical judgment. And our last patient population is anyone with an LDL level of more than 190, they're automatically prescribed a high intensity statin. All right, so what are some side effects that we see from our statin medication? Well, by far the very first thing you need to know is that they might cause something called myopathy, which is muscle pain. And the more lipophilic the statin is, the higher likely chance that it's going to cause myopathy. And remember, we said that atorvastatin, or Lipitor, was our most lipophilic statin. Now, in very rare circumstances, the myopathy can progress into something called rhabdomyolysis. And this is very rare, but it could be very life-threatening. And essentially, the muscle breakdown is so severe that the muscles release something called myoglobin, and this causes our urine to turn into this brownish Coca-Cola-like color. And this is also a side effect that we might see. 
we can actually do some lab tests and in this case it would be a CPK lab test which measures the enzyme CPK that our muscles release and if our CPK level is greater than 10 times the normal limit then this indicates that our patient might have rhabdomyolysis and we should stop the statin immediately. So a little bit of muscle pain, that's okay, it's somewhat expected, but severe muscle pain with brown urine, you should stop the statin immediately and call your doctor. Another side effect to look out for is hepatotoxicity, and this makes sense because we know our statins work in our liver, but they could also be toxic to our liver. And here we could do something called an LFT test, and then if our LFT tests are greater than three times the normal limit, we should stop the statin. And the last thing to note here, all statins are category X, meaning they cannot be used while being pregnant. All right, so here's a quick summary of all our drugs and everything we learned. We know we have our bedtime statins and our anytime statins. We know we have our lovastatin or our Mevacor, which was our first statin on the market. And then we also have our Simvastatin Zocor. These two were pro-drugs. And then we also had our third bedtime statin, Pravastatin or Pravacol. On the other side, for our anytime statins, we have our atorvastatin or Lipitor. We know this is the most lipophilic. It can cause the most myopathy or muscle pain. And then we also have our rosuvastatin or our Crestor. And this was our most lipophobic, meaning it will cause the least muscle pain. And these two are our anytime statins. And they're also our two high-intensity statins when they're dosed appropriately. So when atorvastatin's 40 to 80 milligrams, it's a high intensity. And when rosuvastatin is dosed 20 to 40 milligrams, that is also high intensity. So like I promised, you guys made it to the end. So like always, let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. Number one, which of the following lipids comes primarily from our diet? Question two, what class of drugs are statin medications? Number three, which of the following is considered a high-intensity statin? Number four, which of the following is least likely to cause myopathy? All right, guys, we made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so. That really helps us out and it helps us reach other people who need this help. Also, check out some merch that we have. We have some new t-shirt designs all the time. And go ahead and look at our Patreon. We have deals starting at just a dollar to help support the channel. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Until next time.